In this video, I'll show you some of the cool new features of PowerShell Universal 1.3. PowerShell Universal is the ultimate platform for building web-based IT tools. We've added features to pretty much every one of our components in this release. So we're going to look at things like APIs, automation, dashboards, and uh, some platform changes. So let's get started with APIs. APIs allow you to create uh, pretty much API endpoints that call PowerShell scripts. So the idea is that we can have a URL and a particular HTTP method, and then from there we can actually call those HTTP methods from pretty much any system to call our PowerShell scripts. So uh, the first thing that we've added is we've added some new variables that you can use inside your APIs. Uh, you now have access to headers um, that are provided by the HTTP request, as well as the URL that was called um, when making that HTTP request. So for example, if I wanted to see those variables, what I could do is I could execute invoke uh, rest method and uh, execute my um, localhost variables endpoint. And then from there, you can see on the bottom here, I have the URLs and headers that were actually or passed in with that HTTP request. Additionally, uh, we have added um, support for sending binary data. So previously, you could only access data that had been um, decoded as a string, um, but now you can actually um, send in binary data. So for example here, uh, if you use the data variable, you'll have access to that uh, byte array. And that byte array, you could then use to do something like this, where you actually write out a file um, based on that byte array. So our data endpoint here uh, accepts the post method, and what we can do now is we could actually read a particular file. So in this case, I'm going to be reading this whiteclouds.jpg file, store that in a data variable, and then I'm going to post that content up to my uh, data endpoint via uh, invoke web request. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and you can see we've got a 200. Everything looks good. And if we actually go to our source directory here, you'll see that my test.jpg file is written because I actually uh, uploaded that and then it called this PowerShell script to write the bytes down to test.jpg. Um, additionally, we've added support for custom responses. So uh, previously you could pretty much return a string and you didn't really have any control over uh, the content type or the status code or anything like that. But now you do. So you can use the new PSU API response commandlet inside uh, your API endpoints. And what this will actually do is it'll allow you to do things like uh, send binary data if you want to uh, send a file down, uh, as well as set things like uh, the content type header. Um, you can also set status codes if you'd like to return things like um, 404s or 401s, that kind of thing. So if we actually copy this URL and paste that into our uh, our web browser here, you can see that it hit the response API endpoint and it returned that image as a binary, uh, pretty much a byte array. And then since it set the content type to image slash JPEG, it actually displays that JPEG inside the web browser. Um, in addition to uh, API features, we've actually added some automation features as well. So the, the big feature that we added for automation was that we added the ability to specify parameters for your schedules. So if you have a script, uh, for example, I have this get process script that uh, accepts a name parameter. If I click run here, you'll see that I have this name parameter that I can type in. And for example, if I wanted to you know, run something like PWSH, uh, it will actually go out and find all the PWSH processes. Uh, what we did was we actually added a a new set of options inside our scheduling dialog here that allows you to actually specify the name parameter for your schedule. So for example, if I wanted to check uh, for PWSH on a schedule, I could do that using uh, this uh, dialog here. And then um, you can create those schedules and what you'll see is I have some jobs running with uh, two different, two different uh, parameters for those. So one's checking for notepad. You can see that I don't have any notepads. Uh, while the other one is checking for PowerShell. Um, and you can see I had one PowerShell instance running. So it kind of allows you to use the same script for multiple schedules. And in that way, um, you don't have to create multiple scripts for uh, things that vary between um, different scheduling times. So if you had a schedule that ran you know, hourly, weekly, 
uh, monthly and it was the same script, but just a couple things changed, you could actually set those parameters um, and adjust the schedules based on that. Um, we've also made a lot of changes to uh, our dashboard features. So uh, first of all, uh, we've actually brought the dashboard frameworks out of beta. So we have the Universal Dashboard 2.9 framework, which is based on the Materialize uh, JavaScript framework. And we have the Universal Dashboard 3.0 framework, uh, which is based on Material UI. So um, you can use either of those frameworks, and we've pulled them out of the beta because we think they're good enough for production use. Uh, additionally, we've added support for integration with the uh, Universal Dashboard Marketplace. So as you can see here, I have uh, various components installed. Um, some of these come with Universal Dashboard, or uh, Partial Universal. So charts in the map component, those actually come with Universal, but uh, Helmet and the UD Financial chart I actually installed from the Marketplace. And you'll notice a new button in the top right here called, or that says Marketplace. When you click that, what it's actually going to do is it's going to go out and communicate with the uh, Universal Dashboard Marketplace and allow you to see some of the you know, new or popular um, components that are available inside um, the Marketplace. So you can see here, there's some uh, cool components like the financial charts that I installed. Uh, if you want, you can click view. It'll actually take you over to the Universal Dashboard Marketplace where you can learn a little bit more about these components, um, see some examples of how to install those components. Uh, additionally, you can click this install button and it'll actually call save module and save them into uh, the components folder, which by default is stored uh, here. So. Once you save those components, they're actually available to all your dashboards. And if we go over to our dashboard uh, page, and then we click um, info here, you'll be able to see that I have um, a components tab where this lists all the components that are currently available to my dashboard. So for example, if I wanted to remove a component, I could do that, and now it won't load that module uh, when the dashboard is started. But if I wanted to add a new component, I could select the components by clicking that components button and from there you can select the components that you want uh, to enable for this dashboard and then click the add button. Those components will be automatically imported into your dashboard so you don't have to worry about calling import module to bring those components in. So you should have a little bit better um, experience managing the custom components uh, that are available um, on the Universal uh, Dashboard Marketplace. Additionally we've released a new NPM package which you'll be able to download um, if you want to build your own Universal Dashboard components, and it makes it way easier to do so. All right, so I want to show a couple of cool components that we've actually added to the Universal Dashboard V3 um, ecosystem, I guess, or component library. Uh, so the first one is new UD upload. So new UD upload allows you to upload files. So this is something that was in UD uh, V2, or v2.9 previously, so we wanted to bring that back to UDV3. So what's cool about UD upload is that you can use it standalone or you can use it inside a UD form or UD stepper. So for example, um, I have this upload button now because I included new UD upload on my page. If I click that, I can select a file. So for example, I'll select this PNG file. And you can see here that I'm just showing a toast. Uh, but you get um, kind of a sense of what is sent inside that um, on upload uh, script block. You'll get the name of the file that was uploaded, uh, the content type and the type parameter, as well as a base64 encoded um, data string that you can then use to uh, process the file. So um, that's pretty cool, and you can use that inside steppers and as well as UD form. So speaking of steppers, we've also um, implemented a new feature inside the stepper control that allows you to validate uh, the steps as the user is moving through them. Uh, the body uh, is a, a JSON string that then you can use to kind of get the context of the stepper. It will provide you information such as the current step and then any um, kind of form fields that you've added inside the step will also be uh, included inside uh, that context. So in my example here, what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if we're on the first step, and if we're validating that first step, I want to check and see what text step one's uh, value is. And you can see here on my first step, I have a text box, and it's named text step one. 
So this uh, like property of this hash table right here will actually include whatever the user entered inside text step one. So then from there, I can actually go ahead and validate whether or not this step was valid. So we have the new UD validation result to pretty much indicate to uh, the stepper whether or not this step is valid and it should continue. So if it's equal to bad, then we want to turn a new validation result that is not valid. But if it isn't bad, then we want to return valid. So if I go over to my stepper and if I type bad, you'll see that the stepper goes red and the form is invalid. Um, if I were to say good and click next, you can see that it moves on to step two and I'm just outputting the previous steps data. So you can kind of use that step data in um, your additional steps. Um, so those are some of the changes that we've made to dashboards. Uh, one big feature too that we've added that was part of Universal Dashboard 2.9 um, was the ability to use published folders. So the idea of the published folder is just that you can map a local folder to a request path and then any files inside that folder you can then um, access via your web browser. So for example, I'm mapping uh, C slash source to my images request path. So if I were to go images slash whiteclouds.jpg, that's a file that I have in that folder, it'll serve that folder and it's the same uh, image that I showed before. Um, so you can pretty much serve up any file you'd like. There are some mappings for some content types, so it'll actually uh, specify the right content type if it realizes what it is. Um, and one thing that we've added that was not available in Universal Dashboard was the ability to actually use authentication with your published folders. So I can specify a path, I can turn on authentication, and I could even select a role um, that you have to be a part of to access those files inside the published folders. Um, so that's great for like hosting images for your um, dashboards or other files that you may be saving that people could download. Um, finally, I want to talk about uh, one change we've made to security for um, the platform. And uh, in the roles dialog now, inside our security tab here, you'll see that we have the ability to add roles. So I have a custom role at the bottom here, which is API user, who uh, has access to the API, is the description that I put. Um, but you can actually add your own roles um, with a name and description uh, as well. So that allows you to use those roles um, in things like published folders. You may have noticed that when I was selecting the role here, my API user shows up. Um, additionally, in things like APIs, uh, you'll also have that API user role show up. The dashboard um, will actually provide a roles variable. So if you have things that you want to show or hide on your um, dashboard, this roles variable will be a array of strings of the roles that the current user that logged in it, uh, has. So if you have a custom role that you've defined, that will be in that list as well. Um, and just like any other role, you can actually go in and click edit on this role and define that role policy. So you could check um, Azure AD groups or Active Directory groups, that kind of thing, um, to determine uh, who gets this role. So that's kind of an overview of uh, the features that we've added in uh, PowerShell Universal 1.3. You can download PowerShell Universal 1.3 from Iron Man Software's download page, and um, uh, it's free to try, so give it a shot um, after this.